So we now need to do step four. And as you can see, step four is slightly different than what we're used to. Not, not too different, but just a little bit different. Okay, so the critical value, the thing about it is, is that you really only need the positive one because no matter what, your test statistic for these ones will always be positive because you took that absolute value in, in the test statistic. So to do this, you need norm dot inverse. Now, if you just type alpha 0.05 divided by 2 because it's a two-tailed test, 0, 1, it's going to give you the negative number because it's finding the one over here on the left, not the one over here on the right. Now the way you get around that is you can do 1 minus alpha over 2, that would work. Or if you don't like that, you can say, okay, I'll just do negative of the norm inverse, and that'll give me the opposite number. And by the way, it works the same for oops, hold on, other Excel, so equals norm inverse one minus alpha over two comma zero comma one like that okay p-value you can find with norm dist so equals norm dot dist and you want this test statistic you think right Sorry, my iTunes was freaking out. Okay, so norm.dist dot that test statistic, comma, zero, comma, one, comma, true, right? Wrong. Okay, so what it's doing is it's finding the area to the left of it, like the whole thing, which isn't really what we want. We want the opposite of that. So you're going to have to do negative of that, make it negative. That way it'll find the area in this left tail. And you think, oh, that's perfect, right? No, that's not perfect either because that's only one of the tails. So you have to multiply it by two, two times that in order to get the two tails put together. So there you go. And it would work the same way, more or less, with norm dist equals norm dist. You have to do the negative of that. Use the negative test statistic, comma zero, comma one, comma true. And then you multiply it by two. So put two times in front in order to get your two tailed two tailedness two tailedness all right so hopefully you can see from these step fours that we are totally going to reject the null hypothesis all right so reject h not because now if you're doing the classical method it's because your test statistic z0 which is equal to 4.31 is greater than 1.960 which was equal to z alpha over 2, our critical value. If you're doing it because the p-value method, you say because p, which is equal to 0 0.1234162, is less than alpha, which was equal to 0 0.05. And I would love to double check that for you with um, stack crunch, but you can't do it in stack crunch you're just going to have to do it this way longhand with excel there is no stack crunch for mcnamara's test not in the version you guys have okay so then that means there is enough evidence to support the claim that well, i get to get back to the problem there it is support the claim that there is a difference in the proportion of individuals that smoke and do not wear seat belts. Okay. And as it turns out, it appears that which one's more popular? Smoking is 67 out of that and not wearing a seatbelt would be 2-1. Oops. Do not wear a seatbelt. There it is. Do not wear a seatbelt and do not smoke. Sorry, I'm losing my mind here. Smokers is 5-1-5 out of the total and not wearing a seatbelt is 3-9-4 out of the total. So it appears that smoking is a little bit more popular. All right, we're done with McNamara's.